Good afternoon and welcome to this really exciting moment. I am Donna Holiday, the mayor of the city of Newburyport, and I can't tell you how happy we are to see such a great crowd, the governor, lieutenant governor here, as we cut the ribbon for a long, long awaited project. Uh, we started seven years ago, believe it or not, with a, a group called the Whittier Bridge Working Group and began learning about this massive $300 million, really important project for our communities. We got together and said, wait a minute, our communities are gonna be suffering for five years of this construction thereabouts, and so we need some mitigation. So we approached then Secretary Mullen of uh, the Department of Transportation and said, we want you to build a shared use path so we can connect our rail trails from Amesbury, Newburyport, and Salisbury. He sort of looked at us, he said, wait a minute, we threw the mission of the MassDOT, it was their revised mission that talked about being green, about doing something innovative, and this is the first of its kind in Massachusetts, and it is absolutely gorgeous. So I wanted to thank the members of the Whittier Bridge Working Group. I'll name the, uh, it started with Mayor Kieser and then transferred to Mayor Gray, uh, Neil Harrington, our engineering staff, DPS staff from our community communities all participated based on what studies we were learning and working on and I also wanted to recognize all of the people who worked on the interpretive panels which you have to see that run along the shared use path. Uh, Jerry Clymer was also instrumental from Salisbury in terms of leading that initiative. So I also wanted to recognize the students from the Merrimack River Charter School who uh, came forward and really pushed. They wanted half of the bridge named Garrison, but MassDOT well, we said, we can't do that. But we came up with another plan, and now the shared use path is referred to as the Garrison Path. So thank you, students, for all of your effort there, too, and being part of this community project. And finally, I just wanted to thank all of the abutters who put up with uh, years and years and years of this work and the great work of Walsh McCourt. They were a great company to work with. They responded to a variety of issues that we had to deal with during the project. It was a very, very well done project. And I am thrilled that we are here today to cut the ribbon of this long awaited project. So I'm going to introduce you to our Master of Ceremonies for the rest of this event. And would you please welcome the MassDOT Highway Administrator, Jonathan Gulliver. Thank you, Mayor, for the uh, warm welcome on a somewhat chilly day out here. But we're, we're here to celebrate the completion on, uh, of, one of one of our mega projects. And mega projects are a pretty special thing. And there's a lot that goes into making them a reality. And this was a 300 plus million dollar project. Some of the driving themes on this project were vision, forming a regional tran transportation partnership, using a transportation project to improve a region's mobility. And our first speaker brings all of those traits to all of our projects. Basically, it's how to creatively look at a situation and institute a thoughtful solution that includes local and elected officials and partners to provide maximum benefit to the community. Please welcome the Governor of the Commonwealth, Charlie Baker. Thank you, Jonathan, and let me just start by thanking all of you for coming out, and more on the, more on the mic. Okay, is that better? Right. I'll do the best I can to make sure I speak into it. Um, first of all, I just want to start by congratulating everybody who's been involved in this. This was a monstrous undertaking, and I know for all of you uh, it took forever. Well, if it makes you feel any better for all of us, it took forever too. Um, but today's a great day uh, and an opportunity to celebrate a job well done by so many people. I want to thank Mayor Holiday. I want to thank uh, Mayor Gray, I also want to thank the town manager, uh, where's Harrington, Neil Harrington, and the rest of the crew who were part of the local uh, voice and advocacy on this because they made an enormous difference. And obviously I want to thank Representative Kel Kors for his work on this and uh, 
Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Um, three hundred eighteen million dollars to fully replace and widen a bridge and improve a four-mile section of the highway. But as you all know, this was a hugely complicated project, and it's a testament to the hard work and planning of so many people at the state and local level uh, that we are here today. And I think in some ways, the shared use path and all the lanes that travel on this bridge and highway represent a big step forward for the Commonwealth and for DOT and how we think about trying to combine the best of both worlds in terms of transportation and sensitivity to the environment. And I would just say that over the course of the past four years, uh, with a lot of nudging from the Lieutenant Governor and from me and from Secretary Stephanie Pollack and a lot of guidance and input from our colleagues in local government, DOT has gotten into the trail business in a big way. Um, hundreds of millions of dollars on uh, bike paths and walking paths across the Commonwealth, in many cases specifically designed to do exactly what this one did here, which is to connect one community to another, where um, when you build roads, you generally speaking build them from one point to another. But a lot of the rail trails and a lot of the bike paths and a lot of the walking paths um, have gaps, and those gaps are simply because um, nobody was thinking about building them from here to here, they were just thinking about building their piece. And one of the things we've been doing for the past four years is connecting a lot of these things so that they now stretch uh, on a continuous basis for miles. Um, and this is true in Western Mass, Central Mass, and we've also managed to connect uh, the Cape literally from the Bourne Bridge all the way to Provincetown. And I think in some respects the opportunity that creates for people to take full advantage of some of our really great um, natural resources here in the Commonwealth is a really big deal. Um, I'm only going to say two other things. One is uh, we plan to spend, if we are lucky enough to survive November 6th, somewhere around seven and a half billion dollars on road and bridge projects over the course of the next five years. And in many ways uh, those are about connectivity, they're about um, creating uh, possibility and they're about ensuring the continued economic development of the Commonwealth and this region and I think in some ways we do that in conjunction with our colleagues in local government and with their representatives and part of the work we've done to create a small bridge program and a complete street program and a whole series of other initiatives which are all targeted uh, to local communities and local government uh, come about as a result of the dialogue and the conversations that we have with our colleagues in local government. And this project, all the way from the big ones to the small ones, uh, are great examples of how we have to work together uh, to actually achieve the objectives that we collectively set for ourselves. I also just want to say in closing that I know how much work Secretary Pollack, who's not here, because she's preparing for a parade in Boston on Wednesday uh, I can't imagine what for, um, how much work and how much effort the Secretary uh, and Administrator Gulliver and the folks on the DOT team put into this. Um, this is a big day, it's a big win, it's the culmination of years and years of shared work and collaborative effort and we are thrilled to be here to cut the ribbon on this. And with that, I'm either going to give it back to Jonathan or I'm going to introduce the LG. What do you want me to do? <laughs> said I can choose whatever I want. That's great. Then I'm going to introduce the Lieutenant Governor. Um, Karen Polito has been to all 351 cities and towns in the Commonwealth of Mass on official visits. Can anybody else raise their hand and make that claim? The answer is no. It's a little bit like uh, Joe DiMaggio's 56 game hitting streak. It will never be broken. But the point behind that uh, was to make very clear to everybody in every community in the Commonwealth that we had our eyes on them and that we were looking to work with them on the issues and the concerns and the initiatives that were most important to them. And obviously, uh, a project like this fits right into that category, and, uh, and I'm thrilled to be able to introduce her to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Baker, and thank all of you for being here for this huge announcement today, the announcement of just opening this shared uh, use uh, path and acknowledging the efforts that have gone into this mega uh, project here in the Commonwealth. Uh, two things I'd like to stress. Uh, 
The governor uh, speaks about our commitment as a, a state government to local government. I have visited all 351 cities and towns and the main reason is because we as an administration wanted to get to know uh, the people who are making the decisions in the communities on the front lines for the cities and towns in which they live. And in doing so, we learn as an administration what you want to accomplish in your community. What are your ideas? What are your plans? And then how can we as a partner with you make your plans come true? This, this is a, a good project. This is a really important project. A, a bridge system like this connects uh, this region. Uh, it was a complicated project in that it had six lanes that expanded to eight lanes and then a four mile stretch on each side that had to also expand to accommodate eight lanes. That in itself is complicated. All of it. All of the planning, all of the design, all of the under uh, uh, abutments as well as uh, culverts and bridge work all throughout. Four bridges involved in addition to this. Very complicated. Oh, yeah. But a really good project in itself one as a standalone in this commonwealth that we're very proud of. But the communities that came together here made this project a great project. This is the first time ever in the commonwealth we have an interstate like this that connects to a shared use pathway. And that idea came from you. And so we thank you as a community for injecting your energy and your thoughts and your vision into this project to make it great. And you stand as an, an example, perhaps to others, not only in this Commonwealth, but to other large projects like this and other places in the country, how you can have vehicles traveling, bicyclists and pedestrians connecting to places in this region. So I really believe this is a one worth celebrating and taking note of. And I'm very proud of the, the local efforts, not only here, but throughout the state, helping Charlie and I and our administration make Massachusetts not only strong in each community, but a great commonwealth from one end to the other. Uh, I also just want to say, this project being as complicated as it is, could not have happened without the expertise, the professionalism, the hard work and dedication of the public servants at MassDOT and I want to give Paul Stedman, uh, District 4 uh, Chief, uh, credit and acknowledgement. He's standing here. Paul, please come forward. Please come forward. A terrific public servant, very dedicated to his work and deserves a lot of credit and his whole team uh, for making this day possible. And then, of course, to my, my colleagues in government, uh, it's a real honor to be able to stand here with uh, Mayor Holliday and Neil Harrington and Ken Gray. Uh, you've got terrific uh, public servants on the municipal le level leading the way and really giving strong voice to the priorities of this region. They are not shy about making them known to our administration and to our team. And it's been a real pleasure uh, to work uh, in conjunction with them to make projects like this as big as this and the smaller ones within this region happen. And I want to acknowledge my, my good friend and your friend and, and representative Jim Kelkors, tireless in his efforts, uh, a wonderful state representative and working very, very hard for, for all of you. And uh, I know that uh, he appreciates uh, you as well and being here today. So thank you. Enjoy uh, what you have as an asset in this region. It's yours and it's a great project. Congratulations. Thank you, uh, Governor and Lieutenant Governor. And, you know, I, I speak on behalf of all of the men and women of Mass DOT when I say that we really appreciate your support and we really appreciate being part of such a great team to deliver these kind of projects. Starting on his very first day on the job in 2015, our next speaker has been involved in this project and has proven to be a valuable partner throughout the process. I hope that this unique bridge and the beautiful roadways are being enjoyed by your 2011 Town & Country minivan. Please welcome Representative Jim Kalkhorst. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. My wife and I really enjoy that minivan. It serves us well with two kids and hockey equipment and all the other good stuff that goes along with having a family. You know, two and a half years ago, 
I filed this bill on behalf of a group of students from the River Valley Charter School, Pentucket High School, and the Amesbury Innovation High School. And uh, I thought it was going to be a pretty benign bill, you know. They asked me to name one span after Garrison and the other span after uh, Whittier, given there's two structures here. And I didn't realize what that was going to cause after. I, I got stopped in Market Basket by my good friends from the, Greenleaf, from the John Greenleaf Whittier home, whom I love and I've grown up with. and. Um, they said to me, boy, we just can't do that. And the Mass DOT said, we can't do that, Rep, because the GPSs are going to be all messed up. So uh, what came of that and, and, and what I'm very most proud of and, and what happens in the legislature and I love to talk about is groups of diverse people came together with a similar interest and in doing something really good for the community. We got Pam and Chris from the uh, John Greenleaf Whittier home together with the students from the River Valley Charter School and Colin Gibney and, and, and the folks from Pentucket out there. I see my good friend, Pentucket High School teacher, out, middle school teacher out there. And all these groups came together in the Amesbury Innovation High School and they came up with a solution in a meeting with the Mass DOT because we just weren't coming up with a solution. And I think it was Colin Gibney said, well, that path right there, who's that going to be named after? And they said, we're just going to call it the shared use path. He says, well, why don't we call that the William Lloyd Garrison shared use path? And because of these students and their, and their, and their hard work, we have the Garrison shared use path. And I'm really, really glad to have been part of that process. Now, the bill didn't obviously make it out of committee, and Mass DOT had, I think, something to do with that. But you know what? These students came up with a great name for a shared use path, uh, side by side. Uh, Garrison's, uh, Garrison and, and, and Whittier were good friends, so uh, it's a good result. So thank you to the students. Thank you to the Coastal Trails Commission, uh, because they really have been working on these projects for a long time, making these old rail beds into to trail systems that we can use, our mayors and our town manager, the city councilors, and, and most importantly, all of you uh, in Newburyport, Salisbury, and Amesbury have worked so hard to make this one of the best places to live and raise a family and, and to work in. I love Amesbury, I love Newburyport, I love Salisbury, I grew up in this area, and I'm very proud to be your representative. Thank you very much. Thank you, Representative. And again, these great projects don't happen without the, the great advocacy of, of representatives like this. So we appreciate your continued support. Our next speaker, being an engineer himself, has a keen understanding of how projects of this size and regional significance can add to economic development and be a lasting improvement for all its users. Please welcome the Mayor of Amesbury, Ken Gray. Thank you, and uh, welcome. This is a, it's a wonderful day today. Really proud to see the governor, lieutenant governor, our elected officials uh, turn out to, to, to welcome everyone and, and be part of this. I want to talk a little about uh, uh, people who have contributed and, and, and things that have gone on. I want to start with uh, the DOT and, and the relationship we've had with DOT. I mean, this can be kind of a big disruption, if you will, uh, in, to, to traffic and to, to people that live nearby. Uh, and I want a special shout out to Ernie Monroe. Uh, there was one point in the project where we, we you, they were going to blast, and uh, and that sort of gave a little trepidation to some of the neighbors. So Ernie came into town hall one night, and we filled town hall. We almost had 75 people there, and Ernie, basically, by the time so Bernie, Ernie did such a great job at the end of the process, the people stood up and gave him a round of applause. And I've never seen that for for a, for a, for a government you know official to come in and try to convince the people that hey here we're the government we're going to help you. Yeah, the people applauded. It was amazing. So thank you, Ernie. I don't know where you are, but uh, but I saw you a minute ago. So DOT has been amazing. Uh, I want to thank Dan Fielding for his. Uh, his communication. I mean, we've known every step of the way what was going to happen, and uh, and he's done a great job on, on keeping us involved. Um, I also want to thank sort of my cohorts on the uh, on the working group, uh, Mayor Holiday, Neil Harrington, uh, Salisbury, and uh, it, it's been a it's been a great pleasure uh, as uh, we've gone through and you know had our little uh, informational meetings so we knew uh, when the bridge was going to uh, to open. This is it's an amazing engineering feat, by the way, uh, to, to and not just for today but for the future too. It's it's really designed to to last us for, for many many years. And this shared use path is just spectacular. It's 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 innovative and and. Uh, and, and it's, it's wonderful for the recreational needs of our, our communities. And I want to especially thank Pam, Pam Fenner and Chris Bryant. And Pam, you've been an undying advocate for 
for the, uh, the, the interpretive panel. So thank you so much, Pam. You deserve, uh, you deserve a, a round of applause. So anyway, thank you everyone for, for being here and, and being part of this, and, and I'm thrilled to be part of it. And, uh, and I'm gonna turn it back over to uh, Administrator Gulliver. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, our next speaker is another local leader who used his experience and collaborative mindset to make sure we always address the traffic needs of the region to enable the right lines of, and to enable the right lines of communication. Please welcome Salisbury Town Manager Neil Harrington. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as you probably know, bridge dedication ceremonies are not the occasion to, uh, to give lofty speeches, but really to thank people uh, for all of the hard work that has gone into uh, making what you see here today a reality. So uh, I would like to start uh, by thanking the Baker Polito administration. Uh, some people call it the nonpartisan approach to government. I just call it simply dedication to improving the everyday lives of citizens. So thank you to the Baker Polito administration, particularly their cooperation with local officials. You've heard us say this time and time again, but both the, the Lieutenant Governor and the Governor both served as local municipal officials and they understand what goes on at the local level. And I know, speaking for myself uh, and Mayor Holiday and Mayor Gray, that we, we appreciate that daily focus on working with the people at the, at the local government level to make things work. Uh, secondly, I would like to echo the um, thanks of the Mayor to those at District 4, particularly Paul Stedman, and Frank Szynski and all their crew for their hard work and Ernie Monroe, a terrific, terrific job. You guys should be justifiably proud. This is a momentous achievement and we really, really appreciate all your hard work and your cooperation, so thank you. And then last, last but not least, uh, it has been mentioned uh, that the coalition, um, excuse me, the Coastal Trails Coalition has been a tireless uh, advocate for expanding our uh, multi-community uh, rail trails, but I would like to single out Jerry Kleinberg, who's from Salisbury, and Jerry will tell you that he's retired, but he's not really retired. <laughs> he has sort of made his uh, his life's work, besides uh, all the things that he continues to do for the town of Salisbury, uh, to link all of our communities together. We're currently. Uh, looking forward to the uh, start next spring of the extension of the Salisbury Rail Trail up to the New Hampshire border. And Ernie, I know we're, you're going to be working with us on that as well. But linking all these three communities together uh, is, is not only a physical improvement, but it's a psychological link to this area. And Jerry has played a major, major role in that, so I'd like to thank him very, very much for his help. So congratulations to one and all. Thank you. All right, so uh, some of you may know that this bridge is dedicated for abolitionist and poet John Greenleaf Whittier from Haverhill. And it is now my pleasure to introduce the president of the John Greenleaf Whittier Home and Museum, Chris Bryant, to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm very grateful to be allowed to speak today. And I wish to thank Senator O'Connor Ives for granting me the opportunity to do so. John Greenleaf Whittier, for whom this bridge is named, loved the Merrimack River and the Merrimack Valley watershed. He wrote many, many poems which attest to this fact. The Whittier Home and Museum in Amesbury, a National Historic Landmark and on the Register of National Historic Places, has made it our mission to keep the works of, the Whitt of Whittier alive through our educational outreach and through hosting events uh, that showcase Whittier's peaceful and abolitionist beliefs. Being a humble man, I'm sure Whittier would have been rather embarrassed that the bridge was named after him, but also probably secretly pleased because the bridge spanned the river that he loved. He would have been rightly amazed at the splendor of this brand new bridge. I would like to acknowledge some very important people at this time. First would be Pamela Johnson Fenner, who has worked tirelessly on the design of the bridge panels dedicated to Whittier, as well as serving on the committee for the Garrison Shared Use Pathway. Pam is a past president of the Whittier Home, and her knowledge of Whittier and local history has been invaluable. Pam, along with her sister Penny and two friends, sang one of Whittier's hymns at the dedication of the original bridge in 1954. Thank you, Pam. Thank you for your hard work and dedication to this project. 
Another person who was present at the dedication of the original bridge was James Reed. James is the great, great, great grand nephew of John Greenleaf Whittier. And James is standing right over there with his wife Mary and his grandson who is somewhere over there. Anyway, um, as a child, James represented Whittier's barefoot boy on September 4th, 1954. And he cut the ribbon at the dedication of the new bridge at that time. His grandson, Reed, is three years old and uh, he's Whittier's great, 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 great grandnephew. I think I counted those right. Uh, and he's with us today. And he is again representing Whittier's barefoot boy. Now, the first two lines of the barefoot boy are barefoot boy with cheek of tan. But we're going to change that a little bit for today. It's going to be barefoot boy with shoes on feet. Anyway, it would mean a great deal to Jim and to the Whittier home should they be allowed to be part of the ribbon cutting photo op today. Again, I wish to thank Senator O'Connor Ives for the opportunity to speak today. It's very much appreciated. And I can only say that I'm from Michigan, my husband is from England, and I couldn't feel more like a New Englander than I have over the past four or five years living in Amesbury, being the president of the Whittier Home. I love it here. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I um, just want to thank a few other people and acknowledge their uh, their contribution to this project before we go and cut the ribbon. Uh, first off, the, it's already been mentioned, Senator O'Connor Ives was instrumental in this project. I also want to re uh, mention Morgan Bell, who's represented in Congressman Malton. Uh, our contractor, this was a design-build project, so we had a contracting engineering team on it. I want to thank uh, Chuck Parrish from Walls Construction, Ryan McCourt, and Steve Frick from a court construction. And then we have a big group of uh, some, some engineering staff from HNTB who's on the design build team. Then there is uh, Mass DOT's engineer, WSP. And then uh, finally, it goes without saying, a project like this can't happen without a great federal partnership. And, and we have uh, uh, our regional administrator here with us today. And uh, he is a constant partner with us on many, many projects. So. Thank you, Jeff McEwen, for your, for your constant leadership with these. And again, it's been mentioned a number of times, but our, our Mass DOT staff, again, they bring professionalism to these jobs every single day. And uh, we, thank, we thank Paul and his staff in District 4, and also our uh, headquarters staff who really manage this project through. So thank you, everybody, for coming. We're going to do a quick ribbon cutting right here. And I believe the representative is going to bring some of the children up afterwards for, for a photo op. So.